What's up, everybody? You're listening to episode 10 of EBPR, Everything But Politics and Religion. We'll talk about things such as drunken sexcapades. Yeah, we will. International excursions. Of course. Korean body scrubs. Oh my gosh, yes. And Donald Trump's recent commentary on LeVar Ball and Marshawn Lynch, where he pretty much said that he should have left, um, you know, um, you know, LeVar Ball's son in... Des, can I, can I interrupt, please? Oh, yo, you always interrupt me. What's good? Uh, this is everything but politics and religion. And while, yes, Marshawn and LeVar Ball are, are not political figures, Trump is. So we're just going to avoid that conversation. We'll, we'll take that one offline. We always got to take something offline. Okay, you know what? That's fine. I'm sorry, girl. This is supposed to be a safe space. All right. Whatever. I'll give you that one. I'm tired of giving in, but I'm gonna give you that one. <laughs> Thank you, boo. I appreciate it. Anywho, today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com forward slash EBPR podcast. There are over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, MP3 player, or Amazon Alexa. Yes, love Audible. Anyway, I'm Des. And I'm Jasmine. Let's start the show. Hello, Des. How are you doing? Yo, what's pappin'? I'm doing good. How are you? (laughs) I'm uh, doing great. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. Um, I... Just going to go ahead and throw that out there. I'm in a little bit of pain. I'm on a lot of pain medicine at the moment from um, dancing the night away at my best friend's wedding. Congratulations, Leslie and Cameron. Enjoy yes. Hawaii. Yes. Yes. Shout out to Leslie. I love her mm-hmm. so, so much. Me too. Me too. So the honeymooners, they are vacationing in Hawaii for a week. So they are going to completely miss all of the Thanksgiving and after uh, things that are going to be going on, but I wanted to go ahead and uh, wish them well and then get to talking about things that we are not thankful for. Oh, Lord. <laughs> All right. I know usually, usually where people are talking about things they are thankful for, this is where we're going to talk about things we're not thankful for. <laughs> and that is you, you, and you crazy consumers who are already lined up for Black Friday sales. Ugh, You're crazy. Fucking repulsive. <laughs> I know it is. It is. It's like, according to an article on Forbes, um, this retail season is going to be bigger than it was previous years. And Retail Me Not and Google predict that spending over Black Friday weekend is going to be up by 47% compared to last year. That's just like more people going crazier over $3 coffee makers and (laughs) buy one, get one free TVs. Like, this is a crazy time of year. Yeah. And it's like, I feel like every single year they come out with articles like this and it's like, yo, this year is going to be the big one. This year, 9 million people are going to get trampled. And it's just like, seriously, like how much more can we do? Like stores are opening up earlier. Mm -hmm. They're opening up like the night before, you know what I'm saying? It's getting crazy crazy and you do you remember that movie jingle all the way i do of like arnold schwarzenegger and sinbad where they were fighting over was it a tickle me elmo (laughs) like fighting over something like something every year there's always a something and unfortunately they be dragging the woke folks of sesame street shout out to elmo into things (laughs) all the time it's i swear to god every time i see somebody fighting over something it's always like some mom fighting over the last you know love to learn elmo or like tickle me mm-hmm. Elmo or some type mm-hmm. of like big bur- something. It's just crazy. And I'm just like, yo, like you people have kids. Right. Okay. Like how? <laughs> right. Can I call just... CPS on them in advance? <laughs> like, exactly. Like, can I, if I see somebody <laughs> wilding out at Target, like, can I call CPS and be like, yo, come through, pull up on your girl. Cause she's doing the most. <laughs> so, and she's doing the most in public. I can only imagine what she's doing <laughs> when she's in the privacy of her home. Right. Where you at? Oh my gosh. So I, as long as I've been on this earth, I've known about Black Friday and I've known about the craziness of consumers out there. So I wanted to, I'm not going to say vent, but just like let this off my chest. Uh, Instances of uh, consumers being crazy and how we've had to deal with them. So 
Des, I know you got stories too. I know we've all done our time in retail and food service. So let us, Ugh. let this be the time that we can just like release the, those stresses. And you know what? I'll start. All right. Let's go. I'm excited. So during my time in New York, lived there for four years. What's up, BX? What's up? Shout out. <laughs> Boogie down. East yeah. Tremont. Yeah. More Sonia. <laughs> that was my hood, yes. <laughs> but um, I was, oh my gosh. Like I was, I needed to do some shopping for an upcoming interview. I was desperate. I needed to hurry up and get on the train. I did not want to be late. And my blouse just wasn't right. So I ran into Lane Bryant. I, you know, I do my thing. Like that's the only place where I can get a, a nice shirt that's actually going to fit my tatas. Right. And they don't have me out here looking crazy. Um, so yeah, I, I do what I'm supposed to do. I get I get my my garment. I get my coupon. I get in the line, and it's about like two three people deep. There's like the accessories that are in the area too. So they're trying to get you to do those last minute add ons plus up your your shopping. Right. Yeah. Uh, I'm standing in the line and then somebody swoops in to like look at some earrings and then she just didn't leave when she was done looking at earrings. Mm-mm. Your girl almost got arrested because I was not Mm-mm. having it. You're not going to cut me in line with this arm full of who knows what you have here. And I know you're going to take all kinds of time. Like I'm trying to be calm and collected and just prepare for this interview. You're not going to fuck around and make me late. Right. Move your ass to the back of the line. I got loud. Out here. <laughs> out here with your digital coupons that haven't qu- completely loaded. Okay. And you know, there's no signal in here. Right. <laughs> never. Never any signal. Lane Bryant, get it together. There's never signal in your stores. And you don't offer Wi-Fi either. So, yeah. so, so what we going to do, man. Oh my God. And I know, Des, you know me, you know that I'm, I'm not going to say like meek and mild, but I, I pick my battles and I'm rarely one to get loud or go off on anybody. So true. But I went off. <laughs> oh my God. I went off. The manager like called me over to ring me up to get me out the store because I was going off. See, and for our listeners, they don't they don't really understand like how big of a deal that is. But like to give you guys a a little bit of context, like in college, I was wild as fuck. So like people would like do things or certain individuals who would just like walk by and like do things and like piss me off. And like Jasmine would see me in the cafeteria and I'd be like, yo, dead ass. I'm about to knock his fucking head off. And she'd be like, Des, Des. We have to remember, like, we're all black students here fighting our own battles. And I'd be like, yo, dead ass, like, seriously, get your, like, get him. Because I'm not from Indianapolis. Like, so for Jasmine to say that, like, she went off, like, I can only imagine this had to be, like, in extreme circumstance. It was, girl. It was. It was my livelihood. (laughs) Like, if I was late to that interview, if I showed up in the shirt that I had on, like, it, it would not have been good. I'd have been living on the streets of New York. It was literally like life or death, survival of myself and my family. And that woman was not getting in the way of that. So Mm. if you're listening, Mm -hmm. I still remember your face. If you're listening, streets. Facts. (laughs) If I if if we see you, if she sees you and I'm with her, I'm running up on you just out of (laughs) good principles. Now I'm saying, like, because you had her fucked up. So therefore you had me fucked up. You tried. You tried. You lost. You failed, <laughs> but the fact that you tried and you didn't back down, you always got a place in my heart. All right, mm. all right. Daz, what about you? You got a story of, of a self-consumer trying you while you were just trying to get in and out? Listen, yes. Okay, so, oh, Okay, so everybody who knows me knows that, like, I love Starbucks. Like, I fucking love Starbucks, right? Mm. Like, I love complaining to Starbucks. I love everything <laughs> about Starbucks. Um, and so like every year, actually around this time, Starbucks drops their eggnog, like, yo, what's good? Come through for the eggnog lattes, come through for the eggnog this. My gosh. And it's (laughs) my favorite time of year. So this actually happened last year, right? I'm like, okay, cool. You know, I have about, I have like a seven minute window to like place my mobile order, stop by Starbucks, pick that John up, get to work, right? Mm -hmm. Like head to work. So I'm like, cool. I roll up into Starbucks. I can see my drink sitting on the mobile pickup counter from my car. Mm -hmm. So I hop out. I go to walk up to it. Jasmine. What? When I tell you 
that Becky with the bad back no. saw me going for the drink and strategically picked it up, looked, read the name that said Des. D-E-Z. D-E-Z, thank you. Not Des, not Dest, <laughs> not Desi, Des, okay? Mm-hmm. Picked it up, saw the name, put it back down, picked it up again, popped a straw in it, <gasps> and I was like, yo. What are you doing? And this, <laughs> and like literally, like she did it so fast. It literally was like four seconds between the time that I like got out my car and started to go get my drink, like got inside the store. And I'm just like, yo, it's like, what are you doing? So I walk up. And, you know, my spinach feta wrap is there. Mm -hmm. Becky didn't touch that. (laughs) But you touched my damn eggnog frappuccino? Double blended? Damn. So That's specific. I didn't even know they double blended. What? Girl, that's that's, that's how you have to ask for it. Otherwise, you get those chunks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I know Becky with the bad back didn't know that. Listen, she had it in her hands. And I walk up and I'm like, yo, excuse me, that's my drink. She's like, "Uh, no, it's not. I'm like, okay, do you know what that is that you have in your hand right now? She's like, it's a Frappuccino. Uh-huh. Is your name on it? I'm sorry. I don't know who you think you're talking to. I was like, bitch, don't play with me. I'm on my way to work. And I literally said that in this Starbucks that is full of people who are waiting in line to get their drinks. Because, yo, I'll admit it. I'm a hothead and I am worried about it. Hey, know yourself. Know thyself, okay? To thine self be true. That's right. <laughs> so I'm sitting here and I'm like, yo, give me my damn drink. And she's like, uh, it's not that serious. And like this lady literally has the cup facing me to where I can see my own name and is trying to tell me that it's her drink. People are real fucking ballsy. <laughs> and I'm just like, yo, the people of Southern California are really about to see what the fuck it is. And so I'm like, okay, there's a reason that hurricanes are named after people and y'all are about to meet Hurricane Des. (laughs) Oh, no. Oh, no. Yes, Hurricane Des. (laughs) Yo, I like, pull. you know, my signature move, I shouldn't say my signature move, but like once I switch my braids from one side to another, Mm -hmm. it's probably going to be a wrap for you. So I'm like, you know what? You're not going to give me my drink right now? Uh, this is my drink. If you, if it has your name on it, they probably made some type of mistake and put the wrong sticker on it. Blah, blah, blah. All right, cool. That's what's up. Excuse me. Excuse me. You work here. You work here, right? Please come get this bitch. Cause she got my drink. Some little innocent, like Mexican kid walks over. Ma'am, how, how can I help you? Like what, what's going on? Yeah. Um, can you get your girl? I'm sorry, ma'am. I don't, I don't know what you mean. Can you get your motherfucking girl? Cause she has my drink. Damn it. Oh, um, okay, ma'am, what's your name? No, this is my drink, my drink. Like, she refused to give them her name because my name was on the cup. Yeah, bitch. So she's sitting there and she's like, right. She's like, this is my drink. I ordered it. I think you guys just, like, put the wrong sticker. And he's like, no. He was like, your name is Des, right? Because, again, this mm-hmm. is a Starbucks I go to all the time. I'm like, yes. He's like, yeah. He's like, she gets this, like, every day. And she's like, well, no, that like that doesn't make sense because the way it was like time, blah, 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 blah. So like this other barista comes over and it's like this girl and she's like, um, that was up there with the spinach feta wrap, right? And I was like, yes. She's like, okay, those two items go together. That's why it says two out of two. Okay. Girl. <laughs> so I'm looking at this broad and like they can like feel me. Like they can like feel me, girl. I, I only had a grande. And they're like, you know what, Des, I'm I'm so sorry. Like, I apologize about that. Like, we've got to get better about making sure that the counter's monitored. Because this bitch still has my drink in her hand. And I'm about to knock her head off. And I'm about to take my drink. Is she refusing to relinquish this drink? She's refusing. Like, you would have thought that this was, like, a cup of sperm that someone who was barren and or someone who needed to, like, fertilize their eggs needed. Right? Like, she was holding on to it for dear life. My God. So they're like, okay, you know what? I'm sorry. Like, we'll take care of it. I've never seen Starbucks move so fast in their lives. <laughs> Within like 40 seconds, I had a Trenta eggnog frappuccino, which by the way, they don't make Trenta frappuc- frappuccinos. That's only for like the, the teas and stuff. Yeah. So like, you know that they were trying to get me out of there. <laughs> She's like, please, please, whatever we got to do, get her out, make it big, make it great. Listen. <laughs> They gave me two cookies. They gave me two of those little, like, voucher things or whatever to, like, come back. Yes. Um, 
and I got a protein box and they're like, you know what? I'm really, really sorry. Like from now on, we'll hold it right here and I'll make sure that somebody like waits to see you once you get in. Jasmine, I was tight. Like I literally almost ended this woman because how dare you? It's early in the morning. I have a window. You took my window from seven minutes to 32 seconds and I can't. Mm. Like I can't even find my words. Like how, where do you get off? Where do you get the fucking audacity to steal somebody's drink and then try to fight them for it? It's early in the morning. Like, can I go to work? My fucking name was on it. <laughs> my name was on it. Cause you paid for it with your app that knows you like, <laughs> like, right. like hello. This is what I'm saying. And, but you know what? I have to say like, I'm, Starbucks could have handled that one a little better because at the end of the day, you're, the, th the thief, she still walked out of there with your grande frappuccino. With her free ass frappuccino, she probably is just one of those people who walks in off the street is like, oh, there's a couple drinks here. Okay, have free breakfast now. Uh, so yeah. Uh, Starbucks, yay, girl. Okay. I, I, I too love Starbucks and I know they're not perfect. I know they need to get it together and there's there's evidence of that one. Uh, do you, have you ever had like a run in like this with a company? Oh, Jasmine. <laughs> You're like, no, like that's even worse. Like, no. <laughs> it's, yo, it's so much worse. But you know what? I love my run ins with companies, right? Because like, I am a huge proponent of complaining to corporate offices. Yes. Oh, girl. <laughs> So like a couple things come to mind and I'll actually just use like some really, really recent experiences. Um, the first one is JetBlue, right? Now, I haven't flown JetBlue since I lived in New York. So it's been a while. And things, you know, with the JetBlue at JFK operate a little bit differently than the JetBlue in Long Beach, California. Oh. So I roll up in there, you know, prepare to go to San Francisco, which... We discussed last episode. Shout out to episode nine. Hey. Um, I roll up in there. I've already checked in. I've got my bags. I just need to get my bag tags. You know, go do the thing at the front where they check your ID and keep it pushing. Yeah. So I come up in there and they have kiosks. I'm like, okay. I go check in at a kiosk, get my bag tags or whatever. But there's like bunches of people around the gate agents where you drop your bag. So I'm not clear where you're supposed to get in line because there's not the typical, you know, little, little zigzag line area. Mm -hmm. So this lady, her name is Lisa. She's some type of Spanish. She sees me looking around for where to go. So finally, I'm like, excuse me. I'm like, you know, where's the line for the bag drop? She's like, it's right there. She had an attitude then. I let it go. Okay. Okay, Lisa. Okay. okay. <laughs> I let it go, right? Like, I'm like, you know what? I'm going out of town. It's going to be a lit weekend. Like, I'm good. Like, whatever. I'm not worried about it. So I'm standing there, and I'm with my mom. I have my daughter. I have a stroller. I have a car seat. I have bags. I have all of these things. Yes. And Lisa's directing people behind us because, you know, I, I guess this is me now forming the queue. Oh. So I'm standing there for a couple minutes. People are taking mad long at the drop-off area per usual. I see, you know, the counter clear off and I'm like, okay, cool. She's about to call me over because I'm not the type of person to like rush an agent. Like that's not what I do. Right. Because you don't know what they got to finish up with that last person. Like you just can't be exactly. up there. Exactly. Mm -mm. Yeah. I'm with you. I'm with you. Exactly. And I'm not, and I'm not, and I'm definitely not the person who's going to roll up to the counter. Have you be like, okay, I'll be with you in a second because then I'm going to get pissed. Right. <laughs> like, no, you're going to be with me So, now. right. So I'm standing there just waiting patiently. This bitch, Lisa. Um, hi, ma'am, sir, you guys can go. Tells these little old white people that were two people behind me to step up and drop their bags at the open agent mm. or with the open agent. And that is the moment when Lisa fucked up. <laughs> that is the exact moment. So I'm sitting here and I like look, right? Because I'm trying to make sure that I didn't just lose my mind you know, I'm in Long Beach, so, like, shit happens there. Trying to make sure I didn't just lose my mind. I look. I see what's going on. I look back at my mom. She's shaking her head because she knows. Uh -uh. <laughs> oh, no. So I'm looking at Lisa. She ain't looking at me. She finally makes eye contact. I was like, excuse me, you saw us standing there. And mm -hmm. do you know that this bitch then said, excuse me? And walked over to me like she wanted to fight. No. What? Bitch, what? No. Jasmine, she literally 
in her navy blue uniform with that little awkward ugly ass bow tie neck sash whatever the hell it is that they call it walked over there with some swiftness in her pace of her steps and s- says excuse me mm. she's about a foot and a half from my face and i said you heard me one and two you just told those people who were standing behind me to go up there They were in a different line. No, 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 baby. They were in line behind me. Um, I don't know what to tell you, blah, 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 blah. So she's like literally like right here. No. Okay, cool. I'm holding my daughter. Here, mom, hold my baby real fast. (laughs) My mom's like, Desi. (laughs) Right. My mom's like, Des, Des. And I'm like, no, no, no. I'm like, who you who do you think you're talking to? And so she's shaking her head. She's like, she's like literally getting crunk. And I'm like, oh, that like it's what's good? Like, let's, let's, let's go. And so, like, right as, like, Lisa's about to get her ass beat. Okay. (laughs) Monica, the agent, is like, hi, I can help whoever's next. And Lisa backs that ass back up and goes and starts telling people to get in line. I'm like, you know what? All right. Cool. Strike. Strike 10. (laughs) So I pull up and, like, Monica's like, oh, hi, how can I help you? I was like, I'm sorry. Um, Do you guys have, like, a customer service desk or is there, like, a manager, somebody that I can talk to? Mm -hmm. Monica, thinking she's a slick-ass bitch. Oh, I'm I'm the person who who's the lead. Well, is there something I need to know about? And I can see her based on like the expression on her face that like A, she ain't nobody's lead. Okay. And B, <laughs> that Lisa is clearly her homie because she's like over there like laughing, smiling, doing whatever. Uh-huh. And I was like, well, actually, your girl, Lisa, I think her name is, is insanely rude. Um, she did X, Y, and Z, and I broke down the whole like situation. First words out of Monica's mouth. Well, I don't know that she's insanely rude. Bitch, who are you talking to? Monica, you can get it too. Right. <laughs> and so that's when my mom steps up and is like, um, excuse me. She said she's insanely rude. I believe the customer's always right. I can attest to everything she's saying. I'm not really sure what you're trying to do here. Right. So Monica's like, oh, okay, well, you know, I'll talk to her. I was like, so how are these situations rectified since you're the lead? Oh, well, it's just, you know, it's usually like a coaching and additional training, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, you know what, whatever. So from that moment, I knew. I'm like, okay, you thought you were slick. You're nobody's lead. I'm good. So we drop our bags off, get ready to walk to like go get in the security line. I look back. I see Monica shooting Lisa a look. And she Lisa's like smiling, like laughing to herself. (laughs) So my mom walks by Lisa. And like she like shoots her a look because that's who my mother is. Mm -hmm. She shoots her a look. And Lisa trying to be a smart, a smart ass goes, okay, enjoy your flight. And I go, don't try to be helpful or nice now. Right. <laughs> she waits until I make it past the door, turns around and says, excuse me again. Oh God. <laughs> so at this point, my mom is pushing the baby in the stroller. I've dropped the bags. All I have is my carry on. So I'm like, oh, okay, what's good? I start like walking back and like the people behind me are like, it's okay, sweetheart. She's obviously rude, you know, blah, 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 blah. Because I'm like, you're not about to disrespect me. Like you mad because I'm going places and you're just telling people where to go in line. Like get out of here. (laughs) Yes. So JetBlue tried it. And that evening when they sent me the survey to reflect upon my experience with them, I gave some, (laughs) oh, I reflected. I gave some very candid feedback and then I followed it up with an email to their corporate office explaining my dissatisfaction, my disappointment, et cetera, with the lack of service that I didn't, or excuse me, the lack of service that I received. Mm -hmm. And that was followed up with a response from them with a $150 travel voucher. Okay. And an apology. But at the end of the day, Jasmine, Mm -hmm. let me see Lisa out here in these streets, though. (laughs) Let me see her. Let me see. Because you got me fucked up. Thank you. Thank you. See, you you know, like, it's crazy. Like, when you have, like, an experience with a company like that, like, a company you're giving money to, like, substantial amounts of money to for a service – and then their representatives just treat you wrong, you, you'll never go back. Exactly. You probably will never fly JetBlue again outside of using that voucher. Exact girl. <laughs> That's it. I'm going to use the hell out that voucher. I'm going to try to get me a round trip for 150 or less so I don't even have to come out of pocket a dollar. Mm-hmm. And that's it. <laughs> that's it for JetBlue. Right. You messed up. 
You messed up. You got to choose better people to represent you. Oh, Lisa and Monica, fuck out of here. <laughs> I was like, just where's Rachel and Phoebe at? Where are they at? <laughs> right? Ugh. Anyway, so that was my long drawn out story. I got others, but I want to hear what you got because you know your your Lane Bryan story uh, in Harlem that had me. <laughs> so, yeah, I I have quite a few stories. I have quite a few, and quite a few that also don't have resolutions to this day, which is really upsetting. Um, and and mm-hmm. that's the one that I'm going to put out here into the world, and maybe some of our listeners can kind of help me find that resolution. Um, back in 2000 and 11. Oh, shit. Yeah, we're, we're taking it back. We're taking you brought back. out a date, though. Like, you... Oh, because I still have the emails. I still have correspondences, okay? okay. Let me tell you. It's oh. out there. Um, Back in the day, I was living in New York City, and my girl Adele was going on tour, and she was going to be at mm. the Beacon. Wait, is it the Beacon? Was it? Yes, at the Beacon. At the Beacon Theater. Oh, my gosh. I got hold of like reserve access. I needed to like go online and buy the tickets. Me and my friend Arnell, shout out. Hey. Um, hey. We were just like, okay, we're going to get these tickets. We're going to go see Adele. We're going to get our lives together. Yes. Yes. I'm at work waiting for the pre sale to open. It opens up. I, and, and okay, let me, let me preface this. This is through sandbag.uk.com, a ticket distribution company based out of the UK, because, you know, Adele's from the UK. Okay. So I'm like, okay, right, so here we go in with the UK. Right. So I do my two tickets. I see the, I see the amount. It, it's in USD. I'm just like, okay, we're cool. Blah, blah, blah. Put in my credit card information. The, the order goes through. The money's taken out of my account. I do my dance, I do my jig, I, I bust it down to uh, chasing pavements. I, I did a, as much of a jig oh, as no. I could do to a slow ass Adele song. Anywho, yeah. <laughs> Ce- celebration <laughs> occurred. And then on February 10th, 2011 at 3.52 PM. I'm done. I get, a, I get an email from tickets at Sandbag. And I'm going to read it to you guys because I want you to read, I want you to hear and experience the heartbreak and horror and anguish and all the other feels that I felt when I read this email, when it came through. Oh, Lord. It starts. Hello. I'm very sorry to have to inform you that your order for Adele tickets did not process correctly through our store. And although the money was taken, no seats were allocated to your order. Uh, sorry, I need I need a moment to just breathe. Uh, we apologize that we weren't able to fix the problem before the tickets sold out. Uh, we only had a small allocation of tickets. Uh, we will now refund the money that we charged you. It will go back onto the card that was used to place the order and should show on your account within three working days. More mm-hmm. tickets will go on sale for the for this event at 10 a.m. Friday, February 11th through Ticketmaster. Please use the following link. We have done our best to try to secure more seats to fulfill your order, but to no avail. Please accept our apologies for this, te- for this technical error. Kind regards, Helen at Sandbag. Mm. Mm. Yeah, putting out all our information. Helen at Sandbag. Not today, Not today. Helen. Let me let me let me go let me go back through the dates. I received this email February 10th. Helen says mm-hmm. that more tickets go on sale for this event at 10 a.m. February 11th. In 2011, I was making pennies and I saved up all of my pennies to buy these damn Mm -mm. tickets. So to know that I wasn't gonna get my money back in time to buy tickets the next day, it just really set me off. Dear God. I I wrote wrote this response. Good afternoon. Not sure of the time where you are. This is really unacceptable. How is it that I, the consumer, am worse off because of a technical error on your site? 
I spent time trying to reload your page and I was finally successful and I finalized a transaction to purchase two tickets. Now the money has come out. My friend and I are excited about our reserved seats and a full 24 hours after the transaction, you tell me that it was all for fun and I have not secured tickets. So now I have to try again tomorrow for tickets that will cost more and we're not going to sit in the reserved seats. And that's if I can even get tickets. I wouldn't be upset if the reserve section was in a corner and the seats I could potentially get tomorrow were front row center, but what are the odds of that? Are you going to be able to offer some sort of compensation, drinks, meet and greet, sound check, VIP, anything, since I'll probably only be able to secure seats in a lacking section of the theater, and that was to no fault of my own despite my hard work trying to secure advanced tickets? I'm very disappointed, but I trust this situation will be rectified soon. There was a response. There was nothing she could do. She gets an oh Helen and, and forever Arnell and I we, we we talk about we talk about Helen so fondly. Let me tell you how it played out. Mm. We were able to get individual tickets. Me on the far right corner of the Beacon th- Theater and my friend on the far left corner of the Beacon Theater. Oh my god. We were separated by great great lengths. We did not get to roll in the deep. We didn't get to do anything that we were trying to do together at this concert because of Helen. Mm. Mm. Screw you, sandbag.uk.com. <laughs> like, oh my God. It just, just that friendly reminder. Helen with the bad act. You know, it's just that friendly reminder that like, there are companies out here that are just here to try to get your money and they are not professionals at what they do and they do not. And I, and I know that no one is perfect, but if you're going to do something so big, so substantial reserved advance tickets to yeah. the performer that is finally getting to go on tour, do it right. Right. Or, and, and fix your problems, fix your issues. You have not fixed your problems and I will never ever buy anything ever from sandbag.uk.com and I'm making sure that everybody I know knows to never buy anything from them because they're going to treat you wrong. Wow. As never buy anything from Sandbag. Look, when Adele goes on tour again, if One Direction gets back together, who else is from the UK? Rita Ora, if anybody ever cared about her. Like if- No, (laughs) no, 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 still, no, no, no. Like if anybody from the UK tries to peddle it over here in the States and Sandbag is who's their their ticket distribution, don't even go, not even worth it. Mm -mm. Oh my God. Well, see, I don't trust the British anyway, but like- Yo, that's so. Mm-mm. See, I would have, I would have had to catch a flight and then catch a body because Helen would have had me ten shades of fucked up. It was, you know, like if I were in a better financial space. Yes. If if other parts of my life were together, I I would have, I'd have been there mm-hmm. and I didn't. We'd handled it. But Helen still works at Sandbag. I know because LinkedIn is crawling through my email and they have her email address and I still get that. Do you know Helen at Sandbag? Yes, I do. Mm. We are not connected. Mm. So yeah, Mm -hmm. you know, once, once I hit it big and I get some money to go over to the UK and be arrested for a little bit, I'm going to go holla at Helen (gasps) in Sandbag. (laughs) Ruined it. Ruined my whole entire fucking experience it was awkward it's so awkward to go to a packed sold out concert with nobody I, with <laughs> nobody and your person is way 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 far away and you were literally just like looking over other heads and like trying to make eye contact with them like you ruined That's my crazy. concert experience <laughs> helen and your well, raggedy ass website facts shit Helen's trifling. Yeah, she is. Yeah, she is. But at the same time, like, I know I've been a young person in the workforce representing a company and I didn't know any better. You know, I I probably could have fucked up. There's probably somebody who was cursing my name (laughs) because (laughs) of what I did to them on behalf of the company. So it's, I know, there's some full circle shit out there. I know, I know. Do you? Somebody is out there. (laughs) somebody's out there like listen here one time this little heifer named jasmine let me tell you about this bitch somewhere 
someone's grandma is reserving a special place in hell for you, Jasmine. So, <laughs> oh, I know, I know, and I, I and I actually know who it would be. It would be the woman who, when I worked at Lane Bryant, actually that same Lane Bryant that I had had an issue with, uh, when I worked at Lane Bryant in Harlem, and somebody oh. had the audacity to return clothes that had been worn, tags removed, clothes <gasps> stained, and I said, "Hell no." <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Yeah, 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 yeah. There was a time that I worked at the Lane Bryant in Harlem on 125th <sighs> Street. Yes, yes, yes. That same place I got my blouse from. Yes. I was working the register, and this woman tried to come in here with some clothes that had clearly been worn. Smelled like cigarette smoke and food. Had armpit deodorant stains and sweat stains. They were wrinkled, like, obviously worn obviously oh worn God. multiple times mm -hmm. and tried to return them. I had to, I, you know, and it was policy. Like we had already been warned that a lot of people have been like shoplifting from the store successfully. And that's what <laughs> they do. <laughs> it's Harlem. It's Harlem. It's, ha it's Harlem guys. So <laughs> it's to be expected. 125th. Oh yeah. You getting stole from. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it is to be expected. That's why they got security in there, but they, they can only do so much. You go into the fitting room and you just happen to have your, yep. your wire pliers or whatever it is you, you're doing to boost the, the security tag off. They were successful in their efforts. Mm. <laughs> so we had already gotten the rundown. Like if somebody's trying to return something without a receipt, if they're trying to return something that you can't identify as previously being in the store, or they're returning something that has clearly been worn, like just say no just like put a stop to it just say no <sighs> and that is that was this instance like it, it, it there it was happening to me and I, I put my foot down I was just like no like we we can't return this it's obviously been worn the tags are not attached you do not have a receipt I cannot take this back this lovely woman reserved a place in hell for me like oh that, my the, god the bottom levels of hell for me i have never been cussed out like that before in my life <sighs> i'm still just just thinking about like how bad it was like it she she read me she yo what did she call you i need to know I, some of the names I, i've had to block them out for my own protection <laughs> <laughs> I just remember the waves of emotion of just like anger and shame and embarrassment <laughs> and then frustration and then just trying to get a word in and it being unsuccessful and then people come and look at it and see what was going on. Like, I just remember all the feels. Oh, I got cussed the fuck out. And, <laughs> and, then, and then like she leaves and you piss, but you over there feeling like a punk ass bitch because you because you couldn't retaliate in the ways you wanted. <laughs> So you're like, damn, yeah, she really got me. <laughs> she did. Yeah, she got me. She, got, but she didn't return them clothes. Hmm. Mm, so she, <laughs> so who really got got? Hmm. N not me. Who really got got, Miss Loretta? <laughs> it was okay. <laughs> Thank you. But yeah, she she definitely took some cash out of my behind. That's for sure. <laughs> Man, Ooh. you read me. Oh, okay. I'm gonna reflect on that, trying to rebuild my self esteem from from reflecting on that moment. What about you? Have you ever been told off as you represented a company out there in these streets? You know, I have, <laughs> and and my situation, my situation is actually like pretty funny, right? So, like back in college, shout out to Indiana, FC. um, FC. I worked at our on-campus coffee shop, which was called Jasmine's. Hey. Um, Jazzman, like the guy who plays the saxophone. Jazzman. Yeah, not not Jazzman as in the co-host of the show, no. <laughs> um, and, you know, like, first off, I didn't like working there, but it paid higher than all the other on-campus jobs. Yes, and, you know what I'm saying? Like, I could get overtime at times. So I was like, you know what? Yeah. It's whatever. Yeah. It's whatever. So... One day, and I should also like mention that like most people on campus were also kind of scared of me because they knew what the fuck was up because I was just popping off on everybody all the time. She's hot headed. Especially the little, <laughs> you know what? <laughs> oh, I know myself. I'm working on things. I don't tell people to go die anymore. So I am making progress. Wait, didn't, wasn't it a couple episodes that she said that, that wait. Yeah, it was the last episode. We're not going to talk about it. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> okay, you know what? Listen, 
listen, I have my days, okay? <laughs> God knows my heart. We, we, we were um, talking about unsolicited dick pics, you know, shout out to episode nine, you know, UDP. <laughs> oh, Send her to those God. things. Oh kids. yeah, I told them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. You're right. Um, so anyway, so the biggest issue working at this coffee shop, right, were that like people legitimately thought that it was the on-campus Starbucks, right? <laughs> right? So you would get these country bumpkins from like Rushville, Indiana. Shout out to Rushville. <laughs> uh, who'd like never seen a coffee stand shop or anything before aside from Starbucks. So they would literally think that they could roll up into Jasmine's and be like, hey, yeah, um, I would like a caramel frappuccino <laughs> with um, extra caramel drizzle on top and like this, like I would like soy milk. Like and this was back before soy milk was even popping like that. And I would like soy milk blended in with that, but half soy milk and like they would do the most. And I'm sitting here like, uh-huh. Okay, because I got past the point to where I was arguing with them. Like, no, we don't have this. And I'd be like, okay, uh-huh. Give their asses <laughs> whole milk blend it <laughs> you got you got lactose problems i don't care it's not my problem <laughs> you should read the sign that has not changed since this kiosk opened up <laughs> facts so one day this girl rolls in and she's like with her boyfriend who like did not go to our school she rolls in she's like and she doesn't say hi or anything because clearly she's trying to play like the the big bad bitch on campus she doesn't say hi doesn't do anything she sets her id card because that's how they pay sets her id card on the counter and goes yeah um i need to get a pumpkin spice latte oh baby <laughs> and so like you you rub me the wrong way from the moment you step to the counter because <laughs> i'm doing my homework and you're interrupting so you're going to wait till I get get done reading. So I look up. I'm like, oh, okay, finish reading or whatever. I think it was like something for philosophy or no, it was a journalism class. Mm-hmm. And she goes, excuse me, um, I need a pumpkin spice latte. And I was like, oh, okay, no problem. Um, Starbucks is right down the road. Mm-hmm. If you just go out of campus, make a right onto 31 and go down, it's by Walmart. Mm-hmm. Next to Chili's. Yes. Next to Chili's. <laughs> They should still be open, but I'm not making any promises. Yes. Um, no, no, no. I, I need a no no no. I need a pumpkin spice latte. I was like, I'm sorry, we don't have that here. Yeah. What do you mean you don't have that here? All coffee shops have that. <laughs> Actually, it's a Starbucks thing, and this is not a Starbucks. So, like, first off, this broad came up mad disrespectful. Second off, she's ordering shit that we don't even have. And third, I can tell. By her face, which is turning red because, you know, that's what they do. That's what they do. That she's about to get tight. And her man's sitting there like, I forget her name. It was like. Uh-uh, don't put it her was on probably like, girl. Oh, my gosh. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> don't do you it. know what? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Next time. Um, but he, her man is like, you know what? It's okay. We can just go down the street. Like, you can. Like, he can sense it. Like, he's never been around black people before. So, he's naturally scared. And she's like. Oh, no. She's like, no, this is unacceptable. I get, I get this from here all the time. I was like, well, you're getting something else from here because we don't even have like the pumpkin spice seasonings or anything. Like, you can get a chai tea latte, but we that don't. Kind of tastes like pumpkin spice stuff, right? Right, except no pumpkin. But we don't have that, and yeah. so she's getting tight she's just like you know what this is so fucking unacceptable like this is why you fucking work here and like you're mad because i'm up in here ordering this and you like need to make me the drink that i just requested i'm gonna write a comment card because that's back when our cafeteria was doing like the comment cards they wanted everybody's fucking feedback on everything she's like Mm -hmm. i'm gonna fill out a comment card because like this is shitty customer service i don't know who the fuck you think you are you like she's like going in right oh my oh my (laughs) Like, please fill out that common card and then put the emphasis on the PSL. Please. Thank you. Right. I was like, so I'm standing there and I'm just like, you know what? Like, okay. And so I'm like, yo, who the fuck are you talking to? And she's just like, well, and I'm like, don't try to clean it up now. I'm like, we don't have pumpkin spice lattes. And even if we did at this point, you wouldn't get anything. Right. And she's just like, well, you can't tell me blah, blah, blah. And like, literally like this girl is like still trying it with me. And the only reason I didn't pop on her is because I was making over minimum wage per hour. And let me tell you, man, I was on campus jobs. 
Or usually minimum wage. Girl. And you got paid once a month. Oh, oh don't remind me. Oh, my God. I'm still Ooh. not sure that's legal. I'm still not sure it's legal, but. Amazon pays people once a month. So. <sighs> okay. Yeah. It's probably legal. Unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so like I'm sitting there and I'm just trying to do my due diligence. You know, I'm telling you, we don't have that. I'm even making like other suggestions. Like, you know what, you can get this, you can get this. But you really thought you were going to walk up in here and get a pumpkin spice latte. And ain't no type of Starbucks anywhere around. Fun fact, uh, that Jasmine's Cafe is now actually a Starbucks. Is it really? Campus last week. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh yeah, just wait till I go back. It's gonna be a it's gonna be a wrap. <laughs> yeah, but and you can still pay with your your ID card. You cannot pay with your Starbucks gold card though. So don't really, worry. yeah. Oh no, yeah. see, mm-hmm. they had the pumpkin spice shit and everything. So it's so it's almost as if that girl who went off on you was telling the future. She was predicting. Nah, she what was, was funny? <laughs> so what's really funny though is that she did actually fill out a comment card, <gasps> and. Yeah. And the, um, my boss came up to me the next day and was just like, Oh, you know, like we got this comment card, blah, 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 blah. blah. And she was dumb. She didn't know what was going on anyway. So mm. she's like reading it and she's like, wait, she was trying to order a pumpkin spice latte. She's like, but we don't carry that. Do we? I was like, no, we don't. No, no. <laughs> and she's just like, Oh, okay. Yeah. Nope. Never mind. Don't worry about it. I'm just like, you dumb bitch. Like you really thought that we carry pumpkin spice latte and you tried to snitch. And like, now you look dumb. <laughs> you tried it. You tried it. Another Wait. fun fact, <laughs> she got put in one of my groups in another class before, uh, before we graduated. Oh no. And I set that ass on fire and made her ass and made it a living hell. She dropped the class. So there we are. <laughs> Sorry, pumpkin spice latte girl. Oh my gosh. Basic. <laughs> Wait, let me, let me, okay. Of all the stories that we've told, they all somehow revolve around the holidays. Yes. It, 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 this is supposed to be the season of being thankful and, you know, seasons of giving, but it just seems like this, this season brings out the worst in people. The absolute the worst. <laughs> the absolute worst. It doesn't matter where you are. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, why Why are so many people and, and companies and just places just trying to fuck other people over during this time of year? I really, you know what, I don't know, aside from the fact that they think that they can. And and, and in all honesty, especially from the company perspective, a lot of these companies can because Mm -hmm. there are people out here who are not like me, who are not like you, who are not going to push back. So Mm -hmm. they'll get the email from Helen and they'll sit in their room and cry and be like, oh, I can't see Adele now. This really sucks. And they're not filing any corporate complaints. They're not doing anything like that. So these companies are getting away with that and they're still getting their coins. True. So true. They still selling out tickets in the reserve section. Helen. Right. They still overbooking flights. American, (laughs) Delta, Southwest, everybody else. (laughs) JetBlue, all Mm. (laughs) y'all. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. So what have you done to put a stop to it or to at least protect yourself? Like give, give some tips for the people that usually don't stick up for themselves during these situations. What you got? What you got? All right. So for the people who don't stick up for themselves during the situations, the people who are being wronged, mm-hmm. um, typically by a company, right? Like, let's say if you're being wronged by a company, mm-hmm. my advice is to always file a corporate complaint. And when I say a complaint, I'm not saying, okay, your chicken is undercooked at chick at Chili's, send it back. No, you don't do that. <laughs> what you do is make mention of it you know, to the people at your table or whatever. And, and if you're feeling ballsy, I mean, you could, you could send it back or whatever, but your best bet is going to be to contact their office afterwards and file a detailed and serious complaint and over-exaggerate and make it sound like, yo, you had the worst experience of your life. You damn near died from the chicken. You've been a, a, an avid Chili's customer since you were knee high to a duck's ass. And you can't believe <laughs> that this is happening. Right. So like, yeah. That's the number one way to advocate for yourself. Because let me tell you, there is no better feeling than receiving a hundred dollars in Chili's gift cards or complimentary coupons mm-hmm. after they fucked up a two for twenty two deal. <laughs> uh, that, yeah, that's really specific. It sounds like you're speaking from experience. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wait a minute. 
Yo, just wait, just wait, audience members. Like we will have something on our blog here soon with with all the ins and outs and the tips and the tricks. Because listen, y'all are missing out on this on this free free. Okay, and um, like for me, like I to co-sign for that. Like um, if I don't, there are some times where you just don't feel like writing a detailed letter. Oh boy, uh, but I will never hesitate to go to Yelp mm. and we'll give a one star review and we'll just type it all up in my frustration and and take some pictures. Uh, shout out to you, Baseline Fitness in Kirkland, mm. huh. huh? And shout out to you, Eyebrow Place in Redmond, hmm, mm. hmm. And listen, and and Yelp will do it too because here's the thing, especially with those like local businesses oh, yeah. or the smaller the small local ones, businesses, yeah. especially. If you're a Yelp Elite member or you have like a significant number of reviews under your belt, mm-hmm. your shit shoots to the top. Oh, yes. So people who are looking for like really good restaurants, yours is the first one that they see. A lot of times it doesn't even matter when you posted it. Mm-hmm. And if they see like, oh, they had three roaches playing tag in the bathroom <laughs> when I went, they're going to be like, you know what? We're probably going to go ahead and skip that one. <laughs> yeah, they're going to be like, I'm not going to to gin sushi nah mm-hmm. i'm good Mm-mm. i'm not gonna go get my brows threaded at that place no not today no i come out what do you mean they <laughs> they double dipped when you got your brazilian done ah! oh no Wait. Ah! <laughs> that's the worst that's a red flag oh my gosh herpes is real folks oh my gosh Woo. but yes 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 okay yeah that's that's the best way to put a stop to it we're definitely gonna write about that on the blog yes yes yes, yes. Um, but the one way that I'm protecting myself now that I'm no longer working for a company that requires me to be public facing, but if I were, and I just couldn't put up with like a crazy customer on the other side of the counter going off on me again, I am so quick, so, so quick to call security. Yes. <laughs> also a good one. Or a manager. Like you, like, believe you me, you don't pay me enough to deal with mm-hmm. that, but you get paid enough. So come on, do your job. Come on. I'll, I'll be in the back. Come through. <laughs> oh, my. Yeah. Have you seen that uh, Mad TV skit from, like, back in the day with Bone Quee Quee at... Um... You can have it your way, but don't get crazy. <laughs> yes. Don't get crazy. That's right. Security. Security. Uh, she tried to fight me, sir. Mm-mm. See? Yeah. <laughs> I'm so quick to pull a Bone Quee Quee. Get, get security. Come on out. Whew. But yes, but the ultimate way that I'm protecting myself during this time of giving thanks and crazy shopping experiences is staying my ass in the house and shopping online. <laughs> yes. You probably won't see me in a brick and mortar store until 2018. Let me tell you. Mm. Listen, if you see me in somebody's brick and or mortar shop <laughs> on or around Black Friday or pretty much any time from Thanksgiving to new year's okay. best believe i absolutely need something or there is like a killer deal that i am willing to sacrifice my life my sanity <laughs> and my coins for because you're not going to catch des esper's ass in nobody's store for some fuckery or somebody's okay. elmo i love my baby she can okay. wait uh, look let's be real the baby don't care about that toy they care about the box that the toy came in she care about the wrapping paper. Okay. They don't care. Can you think about it? Mom killed two people to get me this toy and <laughs> didn't even play with it. <laughs> Mom's in jail forever. Can never play with mom, but I can play with Elmo. Like, no. No. No, not at all. <laughs> All right, but I want to hear from you guys. Like, I know you have witnessed or experienced some sort of fuckery surrounding the consumer shopping season that we are in. Let let us know. Let us know. T- tell us about those experiences. Yes, hit us up. You can hit us up on our site. Um, hit us up on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. If you're feeling nasty, I mean, just hit us up. <laughs> It's whatever. We want to hear. Or you can even just drop us an email, you know, ebprpodcast at gmail.com. You know, I love getting a nice little email we can just laugh at. Just send me some laughs. Yes. All right. Yes. Well, thanks so much, Des. I'm glad I was able to, like, release some of that pent up sandbag.uk.com stress into the, into the world. Yo, I'm, st- listen, I'm still sending negative vibes out to Helen because she got me <laughs> fucked up. Man. Oof. Okay, moving on to our next segment. <sighs> yes, let's end it 
or let's get close to ending it on a positive right, note now. That's right. Again, just like last week, we want to thank you guys so much for listening and tuning in from wherever you're at in the world. We appreciate it. So I want to give shout outs to some of our new top countries. Uh, China. What? Hello. Hi there. Hey. <laughs> Hello. Um, and then our friends in Ireland. Special shout out to you. You are not where Sandbag is located, but if you were, you wouldn't be mentioned. Facts. And then we have our um, top cities, uh, those being Indianapolis, Indiana. Hey, hey. Shout out, Indy. And San Francisco, California. Oh. Yeah. Uh, uh, Okay. I just got back from there. Yo, what's good, y'all? I would would much rather see Oakland. But hey, shout out, San Francisco. Oakland, that that was a call out. That That was a tag. You better get them listens up. Please and thank you. Facts. All right. Did you want to talk about our uh, top listeners? Yes, yes. Shout out to our top listeners. Okay, we have a couple of you who have been showing us quite mm-hmm. a bit of love. And that would be Zach Hinton, too. Okay. okay. And Ayana Chanel. Um, seriously, thank you both for showing us so much love. We appreciate it. Um, you've been listening. You've been downloading. You've been doing whatever. You know what I'm saying? Feel free if y'all are dope. Slide in my DMs or whatever, (laughs) and if you haven't already. And, you know, let's connect. Like, tell me about some of your experiences. That's right. And, you know, share with a friend. You know, you're listening to the episodes. You're listening to 10 episodes and we've only published nine to date. Yeah, you you just keep on listening and and share it with a friend. (laughs) Oh. I, I'm still trying to figure out how that how that worked in the statistics. Like it it, it must have been so nice you listened twice. Mm, something was nice. Anyway. <laughs> Whew, okay, now that we've gotten that out of the way, um, before we wrap this episode, we just want to share a special offer with our lovely, lovely listeners. Our sponsor, Audible, is offering a free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial to give you the opportunity to check out their service. Jasmine, are you taking advantage of what Audible has going on right now? Uh, you know I am. Hello, look at me. I love my books. Yes. Um, I am reading The Mother of Black Hollywood, a memoir by Jennifer Lewis, who is the mother of Black Hollywood. Like, she has been in Ooh. everything. Cars, The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, The Preacher's Wife, awesome. The Wedding Ringer. Castaway, Sister Act, you name it, she's been in it. But she out here. You most likely know her from currently being in a very, very popular show on ABC called Blackish. She plays, uh, she plays the grandma on Blackish, y'all. Oh my god! Check her out. This book, just like I've got through like the first three chapters now, and my side hurts from laughing so hard. Like it is funny. Definitely, definitely check it out. All right, Des, what about you? What are you reading? So I am listening to Is Everyone Hanging Out Without Me and Other Concerns by Mindy Kaling. I love her. She's so, oh, she's so dope. And she's so funny in such a like dry, passively racist way that I really appreciate it from another person of color. So shout out to Mindy. To download your free audiobook today, go to audibletrial.com forward slash EBPR podcast. Again, that is audibletrial.com forward slash EBPR podcast for your free audiobook. Yes, please. And again, thank you all so much for listening. If you're not already, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on an episode again yes. or ever. That's right. <laughs> or never <tomorrow>. again. Ever. <laughs> We publish a new episode every Wednesday, but you know, if you need a a little more from Des and I, (laughs) check us out on our website, evprpodcast.com. All right. Well, thanks, Jasmine. It was, it was good talking through all of this tonight and uh, I guess I'll see you next week. Indeed, Des. Have a good one. You too. Holla. Please.